Speed is the record-breaking water coaster at Energylandia. This monstrous coaster is the world's tallest and fastest water coaster, and it may also be the world's wettest roller coaster. If you hate getting wet, stay far, far away from this attraction. Between the towering drop and roller coaster elements, this ride sounds like a winner. But is it actually better than most log flumes? Find out in this review of Speed. Log flumes are crowd-pleasing attractions. These rides usually feature scenic layouts, an exciting final plunge, and a refreshing splashdown. There's something for anyone to appreciate in these rides. Over time, manufacturers started adding more variety to these rides, adding uphill segments to log flumes. But Mach took it to the next level in the late 1990s and early 2000s when they popularized the water coaster. These rides had all the aforementioned elements of log flumes, while also being able to incorporate the curved drops and helixes who have come to love in roller coasters. During this same time period, Intern was building supersized water rides with much less success. Perilous Plunge opened in 2000 at Knott's Berry Farm as the world's tallest and steepest water ride, standing 121 feet or 37 meters tall with a 78 degree drop. Riders praised the massive near vertical drop that was better than many coaster drops to be honest. But this extreme ride needed multiple restraint modifications after a rider was unfortunately thrown in September of 2001. This ride was removed in 2012 due to inconsistent operation. Later, Intamin built an even taller but less extreme water ride for Holiday World, known as Pilgrim's Plunge in 2009. This ride featured an exciting elevator lift hill to bring guests to the ride's highest point of 131 feet or 40 meters, but the drop was only at a 45 degree angle. This ride suffered extensive downtime and was removed after just five seasons. Intamin used their learnings from Pilgrim's Plunge to create their water coaster. Debuting with Dive Vertical at Mirabolandia in 2012, this attraction would feature the same elevator lift system as Pilgrim's Plunge and an equally steep 45 degree angle drop. But this ride would stand 164 feet or 50 meters tall and feature some additional twists, turns, and drops before the final splashdown to make it a roller coaster. Intamin has built four of these water coasters to date and the latest is Speed at Energylandia. Opening in 2018, this ride, according to Intamin, has the exact same height and drop statistics as Divertical. However, Energylandia claims this ride is actually 197 feet or 60 meters tall, so they can advertise it as the sole record holder for the world's tallest water ride. It is believed that figure is the height of the top of the tower, not the drop height. Energylandia has been known to exaggerate the statistics, so this seems to be no different. Speed is the premier water ride at Energylandia. It usually had a posted 45 to 60 minute wait during my three days at the park. If you don't trust the posted wait, they also have markers in the queue line that tell you how long you're expected to wait from that point. Now if you don't ride this attraction early, your best bet, like with most water rides, is to ride it once the sun goes down. Just know you'll likely be leaving the park dripping wet. Row 2 is probably the driest seat, but you'll still get pretty wet there. Speed has two operational notes shared by many of Energylandia's roller coasters. First, loose articles cannot be stored on the ride platform. This helps maximize efficiency. Five to ten minutes before you reach the end of the line, there are a series of lockers you can use. Two, the ride features a turnstile at the station that will admit the exact number of people needed to fill the next boat. Each boat seats ten riders. There are a good amount of them, so the line, while it moves slowly, does move at a steady pace. Just be careful if you're one of the last ones in the turnstile to know that you will not be able to pick your seat, and there's a chance you might be separated as a party. These boats feature lap bar restraints and are comprised of two halves. The front two rows articulate separately from the back three rows. This helps the cars navigate the turns more smoothly. Once dispatched, you slowly float towards the ride's iconic tower. You will have a nice looking rock wall on your left side and a plain wooden fence on your right side. There really isn't much else to see and I sort of think it was a missed opportunity. This section just doesn't have the same quaintness as a classic log flume set in the woods. Eventually you reach the elevator lift. 
which may be the best part of the ride. The views of the park are great, and it's pretty freaky being in an elevator that large and exposed. Now this elevator is designed such that one boat lowers while another is being raised, so the lift system has the boats tilt to the side halfway up the tower for clearance, which is extra unnerving. Once at the top, you move forward and traverse the ride's signature drop. And it's meh. The drop has height, but it's just too shallow to offer any thrills. The drop seems to last forever, and you do build up a good head of speed by the bottom at least. You then skim across the water on a section of straight track. The boats lose a little speed in this runoff, but you don't notice too much on rod. The splash is noticeable though. Those in the front half of the boat will stay dry since the water doesn't really come over the front half of the boat. However, those in the back half of the boat are in for a shock. Remember how the boats are articulated? Water shoots upwards in between the two halves of the boat and all that water hits those in the back three rows. It caught me off guard. Speed then glides over a giant camelback with, sorry for the pun, a lack of speed. So there's no air time. You then coast around this rather dull elevated turn before navigating a 360 degree downwards helix. You won't get any positive G's in this element, but you will get some mild laterals towards the end of the element at least. You then hop over a bunny hill that, again, unfortunately offers no air time, before hitting the final splashdown. Everyone will get their sides rather wet. Those up front will get splashed repeatedly as well. And if you're in a heavy boat, those up front are in for a deluge. The wall of water will cascade over the front of the boat and flood into it, which means your feet will be stuck in ankle deep water until you unload. But that unload station is near, as you slowly float straight ahead into the station, ending the 2,254 foot or 687 meter long ride. So what would I rate speed? I would give this Intamin water coaster a 4 out of 10. Speed is a ride with a lot of wasted potential in my opinion. The ride is a really cool elevator lift hill and plenty of height, but it doesn't use that height well. The drop is too shallow and the coaster section just feels like filler. On the bright side, speed is smooth, and I do think these Intamin water coasters track a little bit better than the Mach ones. And if you want to cool off on a hot day, speed has you covered. This may be the wettest roller coaster in the world. I think the Mach water coasters have superior drops and coaster sections in terms of thrills, and I think I prefer quite a few log flumes to speed as well, because they're more scenic. But speed does offer unique, albeit flawed ride experience. So those are my thoughts on Speed, the gigantic Intamin water coaster in Energy Landia. What are your thoughts on this water ride? Do you think it's a missed opportunity as well? Or do you like the attraction? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.